the next topic is sigmoid volvulus okay now we know that there are two types of volvulus in the large intestine one is cecal volvulus and another is sigmoid volvulus out of these two sigmoid volvulus is more common okay so now we are starting sigmoid volvulus it is most common type of volvulus okay and it can rotate the sigmoid colon can rotate both anti clockwise or clockwise okay as you can see in this diagram this uh, sigmoid colon is rotating anti clockwise leading to obstruction at this level and the obstruction is like a closed loop and that is why the sigmoid colon is dilating and it is a closed loop kind of obstruction okay most commonly it is anti clockwise than clockwise so can sigmoid volvulus rotate both can there will be a clockwise sigmoid volvulus yes there can be a clockwise sigmoid volvulus but anti clockwise is most common okay so it is most commonly anti clockwise can also be clockwise type okay and it is a closed loop type of obstruction that is why we need to intervene early okay because there can be mesenteric ischemia early okay now what all are the predisposing factors suppose if there is a large dilated loaded sigmoid colon if there is a very loaded sigmoid colon there is a very long mesentery okay suppose if this is a sigmoid colon if sigmoid colon is having a very long mesentery so that mesentery can twist okay and if there is the patient is having constipation and a uh, lot of fecal matter is there in the sigmoid colon that can also lead to that is also a predisposing factor for uh, this sigmoid volvulus apart from that it is generally seen in patients who are hospitalized are taking some neurology medicines or some antipsychotic medicine it is mainly seen in those kind of patients okay so now the predisposing factors are a long narrow mesentery and a loaded sigmoid colon okay and other predisposing factors are old age patients who are hospitalized mentally impaired taking opiates or antipsychotics okay this i have already told you now what is the investigation of choice for sigmoid volvulus and what is the clinical feature of sigmoid volvulus so the patient generally presents with abdominal distension abdominal pain and there will be a tympanic uh, note uh, resonant note over the abdomen and then we'll have to uh, go for x ray okay so the investigation of choice here is x ray abdomen and patient will be having abdominal pain abdominal distension inability to pass platelets and feces okay feces of large bowel obstruction and on x ray what we are going to see we are going to see this kind of a picture okay so this there are various signs which are seen on x ray in sigmoid volvulus this can be a coffee bean sign you can see here this uh, can be a coffee bean sign or this can be one omega sign this is omega sign this is vent inner tube sign okay so all these signs can be seen here so these signs are uh, omega sign vent inner tube sign or coffee bean sign and these are very important from mcq point of view coffee bean sign omega sign vent inner tube sign these three signs are seen on x ray now what is the sign which is seen on barium okay so barium enema is also done in sigmoid volvulus the generally we see on barium enema this kind of a picture okay this kind of picture is suggestive of sigmoid volvulus and it is something like this okay so this is uh, also known as bird of prey sign okay so i have written here bird beak sign bird of prey sign and ace of spade sign okay now very important question which generally uh, you people are making uh, wrong choice in the exam the simple question okay bird beak sign is seen in 
बर्ड बिग साइन में सीन इन बोथ एकलेजिया कार्डिया एंड सिग्मोइड वॉल्वुलर ओके बर्ड बिग साइन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन बर्ड बीक साइन ऑन बेरियम इनिमा इज सीन इन जनरली वट हैपन्स इज वी सी बर्ड बीक साइन एंड स्टेट अवे मार्क एकलेजिया कार्डिया बट दिस इज रॉन्ग बर्ड बीक साइन ऑन बेरियम स्वेलो इज सीन इन एकलेजिया कार्डिया बर्ड बीक साइन ऑन बेरियम इनिमा इज सीन इन सिकमोइड वॉल्यूलर ओके सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ we know that it is a closed loop obstruction and there is obstruction and we have diagnosed it with, with x ray or a barium enema now what is the treatment the treatment is initially we'll go ahead with a colonoscopic detorsion okay after detorsion the bowel edema will reduce and after that we'll do elective sigmoid colectomy why we are not uh, waiting conservatively even after uh, there is detorsion because there is possibility of a recurrence okay so the treatment of choice is colonoscopic detorsion followed by elective sigmoid colectomy okay so this is regarding sigmoid valvulus 